above and <clears throat> touch this earth with heavenly reality. Lord, we always say that we are strangers and sojourners just passing through. <clears throat> and Lord, let us not just say those things, but let us live that way every moment, realizing that we are ambassadors from another kingdom, kingdom not of this earth. And as such, <clears throat> let us not use the world's methods, but let us find your heart. Bless this class and bless our understanding in Jesus' name. <clears throat> All right. We talk about leadership. We usually have... Uh, Good with snakes. They're not good with me. <clears throat> if you talk about leadership, there's kind of this view of you have this group of people, <clears throat> whatever group that is, whether it's a church group or General Motors or Kmart or whatever. It's a group of people. And in some cases, in many cases, one person, quote unquote, steps out of the crowd and they become the leader. <clears throat> they can do that any number of ways. They can be at the job a certain amount of time. What do they call that? Seniority. Seniority. You've been there a certain amount of time, so you get, you know, they, they make you the leader and whatever. Other things are is that you can go through a certain amount of schooling or training, and maybe you don't even have to step out of the crowd. You just join and you're on that level. Um, any number of worldly methods for doing these things. But we're pretty much not really doing anything unless we're following God's heart. Unless we're involved with a person, unless our lives are related and interrelated to the living, resurrected Christ. When I say the resurrected Christ, I speak also of his body. That would be us, those of us who are born from above. Then we're pretty much not doing really anything. I mean, we, we are. I mean, you know, we're... You know, there are good leaders out there in the world. There are good people and this and that that can do good jobs. <clears throat> it's not the same with the kingdom of God. It is not the same with the kingdom of God. And that's what we have to understand is that it's a, it's a whole different thing. And, well, let's just read a little bit first here. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's begin at verse uh, 12. For as the body is one, all right, now we're getting somewhere. We're centering on the word one. And yet, what did we say was one? The body. Well, wait a minute. The body, just like my human body, which we're going to see in just a second from the scriptures, is not really one. It's many, isn't it? It's many parts. But it is one. And the one of this body is me. I don't have parts of you in me. Now, I know nowadays they put pig hearts in people. Oh, you know, there are all sorts of things like that. But I'm just, you know, God didn't give you a pig heart. Okay? You know, you have your own original God-given parts. And that's like a real hand. I'm sorry, man. And so... The body, you know, I can just draw it like this. Uh, I guess we'll just do it like this, you know, or something like that. I'm not real, I'm not a famous artist. <laughs> I am an exceptionally good long neck artist. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and uh, and of course there's in there there's a heart you know and then we have lungs around there and we've got 
you know, the gold letters and stuff down here and then the test. Miles and miles and miles of <laughs> And we got the, and those are the inward parts, and then we have the outward parts. We got the paws and, and the toes and the legs and the joints right here, and you know, we got the eyes and nose and all that. Many, 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 many different parts. So let's let's just see the four as the body, as the body is one, and the one now has a name. So if this is the body of Christ, the name of all the parts is Jesus. Can you accept that? If you are joined to him, then you're one. And your name isn't Jesus, but his name is Jesus. Can you accept that? His name is Jesus, and you are his body. Okay. And so he considers you one. And I think it's important what he considers, don't you? You know, we have our own thoughts and we have our own theology. And in this group, we have people that have come from so many different backgrounds. It's incredible. But what we want to do is try to just stick with what the Word of God has to say. For as the body is one and hath many members. For as the body is one but hath many members. The body is one but it has many members. And all the members of that one body being many are one body. And get this. So also is Christ. Just like the human body has many members, but all of those members are one, that's the way it is with Christ. That's his understanding. That's his viewpoint. That living reality that is called Jesus created this world created the human body and the only reason why it is a picture of that is because all things were created by him and for him and to him and through him and by him all things consist and so everything points to Jesus Christ and the understanding of him so he so the writer here Paul is trying to express that and he's trying to bring us in to something more than the study of anatomy and physiology he's trying to bring us out of the earth and bring us into the fullness of Christ and help us to begin to relate in that way. So he goes on to say in verse 13, For by one Spirit were we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Greeks, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink of, what does it say? One Spirit. One Spirit. Now this is important because this body with all the different members, and the differences of the members, with all the differences of the members and all the differences of the functions of the members, all have what? One spirit. One spirit. One spirit. One spirit. Okay. And so he's bringing us into the reality that when we were joined to Jesus, we were made one, baptized into one. And then finally, verse 14, for the body is not one member, but many. The body is not one member, but many, but the body is one. But it is not one member, but it is one spirit, is it not? It is one spirit, but it is not one. It is not one member, but it is one. It is one body. You see what I'm saying? You have to understand the one of which you are. You're not, you're not all the same member. And of course he goes into that. For if the foot shall say, because I'm not the hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? And if the whole body were hearing, where were the smelling? And so he's saying, we're not all functioning exactly the same. We don't all have the same function. We're not all clones. We're not all supposed to look exactly like one another. We're not all supposed to act exactly like one another. We're not all supposed to use it the exact same terminology. But we all are all supposed to have one spirit, one nature, one way if you will, one way. And not one <coughs> function, 
but one way, whether you function in this way as a pancreas or you function as a liver or something else, your functioning is very different from another member, but your way, your spirit, is of one. Now, you say, what does all that have to do with leadership? Well, we, as I said, we, we view everything based on the earth. Pretty much everything. So when you talk about leadership, we have this concept here. Bunch of individuals only connected by function. See how contrary that is already to what we have read? Co connected together by function? No. You know, well, we all work at, you know, Kmart, or we all know how to do this particular job or whatever, and, you know. If you weren't so sweet, that fly would not be there. <laughs> but you are, and you have to pay the price for that. <laughs> and so, so in this earth, in this earth, it is more or less a normal thing that people gather based on function. It is normal that they gather based on likenesses. Whereas in the body of Christ, you have many members. And those members are all varied, and their functions are all tremendously varied. But why are they gathered? Because of what? Because of what? Because of them. <coughs> because of his nature, because of his spirit, because of his life. And he's pulled, he's pulled us together, he's pooled us together, he's baptized us into one spirit and into one nature. And this is the purpose of all that. <coughs> and so. What happens is, is that we begin to lose our earth concepts. In this concept, the earth concept, one thing, and we'll get into all this in much later classes, but one thing that might make a person say, well, gee, I'd like to be a leader. The, the motivation behind that could be ambition. Could be selfish ambition. Could be, you know, the benefit it has to me. Respect. Being in with the in crowd. Being useful. And of course, that could be a selfish motivation, being useful. In other words, you're not content to be a member whether you see the use or not. Whether it's constantly in front of people or not. And so, um, so different motivations can begin to work in the heart of one of these because he is an individual. He has an individual life. He has an individual goal. He has an individual uh, concept about the world and everything. And he, in his own mind, is going to step out of the crowd and become something. Okay? And this is really interesting because as you begin to truly comprehend the body of Christ, as you truly begin to comprehend, let me just say this. I'm going to say this, and I've already said it, but I'll say it. As we begin to comprehend Christ in his body, as we begin to comprehend the body of Christ, I'm not talking about a teaching. I'm not talking about... Um, a doctrine, a doctrine that says um, we are members of the body of Christ. A doctrine that says we are joined together. A doctrine that says we are one. I'm talking about something begins to take place in a member, somewhere in this body. Something begins to take place in a member, and they begin to have the care of the body. Or of Christ in his body. Something begins to kick in because a new understanding, they begin to truly in this area, this is this is the, the truth of the body of Christ, in this area they go through the veil. And you know, I mean people I've known people who've gone through the veil in relationship to their death with Christ and everything and never really seen the truth of, of the body. And so they, they have some basic 
things, but they haven't, they're not continuing. If you continue in my word, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. This is something that becomes very practical, where all of a sudden you begin to, apart from this group, apart from this place, or whatever group, or whatever place that you would be, apart from that, you are in the Word, and God, the Holy Spirit, begins to come and begins to reveal these truths as actual, living, relational truths that you can't avoid. You are not your own. You are part of the body of Christ. You are bone of His bone, and therefore join the other bones. Flesh of His flesh. You are added. You are made one, but not just made one with Jesus that sits on the throne in the sense of. Now, let me let me get this, let me make this clear. Not just one with a place that is just beyond the edges of the universe, and it's a really cloudy, floaty, with a rainbow, and there's a throne there. Like it's, 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 it's like the Milky Way, only better. And there, in that place, is an actual throne where Jesus is sitting on it, and you're one with Him. That's fine. That'll do you pretty much no good other than, I mean... I mean, it's fine to believe that, but the bottom line is, is there is a, listen to me now, my same explanation, there is a resurrected Jesus. The throne is that He and His nature, the land nature, rules over all things, or, or for we see not yet all things under His feet. But it says that they are. And He is the ruling nature of the universe, and we begin to comprehend not just a faraway Jesus, but we begin to comprehend that we are now one, whether it's way far away or right here or, you know, on Mars. The reality of it affects you right here. That's my point. To get my point, my point is that it, the placing, the placement does not particularly matter. The relationship of it is what matters. And if you, so, you know, you can hold all the right doctrines and not relate. Amen? You can hold all the right doctrines. But this is never, ever, ever, and see, we've made it a religion instead of a relationship. We've made it a place where you go and you take a catechism and you learn certain things. And some people would hold that's what Bible school is about. And I say what this Bible school is about is to learn Christ, the one that you are one with, and, and to begin to function by relationship, not just function by ministry. And so what do we have? People that go and they learn biblical doctrine. They never learn Christ. They learn um, function of ministry, but they never function by his life and nature. They learn, basically, it's like a, a, a leadership mill that pumps out people. And I've been around with many of these guys, and I'll tell you what, I know many of them that graduated and got into the real world and faced situations of, of divorce or people thinking about committing suicide. And, and they didn't have, I mean, they, they they would, I'm telling you, I, I mean, I've been with these guys, and they're sitting there talking to this person, and all of the cute little phrases don't work. I mean, all of the lines and all of the comforting things that you would try to say do not work. And I've had them say to me, my God, they didn't prepare me for this. Well, you can be prepared for that by Christ because Christ works. Jesus Christ works. Okay? And he may give you what to say and it may be an instantaneous thing that you didn't even know. But because you're joined and you are all the root and fatness of the vine is yours as a branch and you live that way and you function that way and you walk that way, not just a few times when you hit crisis and then live by your own life, but you've lived that way, you don't know any other way so that when you get in that situation, boom, 
Jesus comes out of you because you do not rely on your own resources. And so there are answers beyond what you have been taught. And there are answers in areas that you have been taught that the Spirit of God can bring up. How many of you have had that happen? When you're talking with somebody and the Lord will bring something to remembrance you've been taught and it came out of you and you said, gee, I didn't realize I even had that. How many of that's ever happened to you? It's an amazing thing. <laughs> it's an amazing thing. that you go, wow, I didn't think I got that much. You know, you're just rejoicing that there's something in you. You know, because the truth is, yeah, as you're learning Christ, if you're truly learning Him, then you are being knit together with one another, but you're being knit in Him, and His fullness will come through you. All right. So, as that begins to take place, and as the veil begins to be rent, you begin to look at the body here, not right here. You do not see this first. There is the living reality of Christ and His body. That's, that's hard for us to comprehend sometimes because this is Christ in his body here. I'm telling you that there is a living reality of that the, where you relate and then you just manifest it down here to mortal bodies. Uh, it's been some time since I told this, but I saw a movie a long time ago saw it called uh, Searching for Bobby Fisher, I think was the name of it. And it was about this kid that was learning to play chess. And, and he was real good. And he could beat everybody. And he was just a kid. And he was real good. And so they, they took him. They wanted him to become a master and go to the, you know, beat the Russians and all that kind of stuff, you know. And so they took him to this master. And, and uh, so, so they started playing a game. And they got into to a few moves. And then the master said to him, okay, well, I'm fixing to do something. And, and, I, I, and we're going to play the rest of the game out here. And he just took his arm and he knocked every piece off the board. And he said, now it's your move. And he said, I can't move. I don't know what to do. I don't know. And he says, well, you know where the pieces were. I, I, can't, I can't see them. I can't feel them. I can't, I can't, I can't focus. And he said, that's because you're focused on pieces and a board and a room and everything. You have to play the game on the inside. You have to know this thing from the inside out. It's got to come out of you, not just come based on what's right there. And I thought, whoo, glory to God. This truth of Jesus has got to come out of us. We've got to have it on the inside. We've got to have it so formed that if the devil comes and knocks all the pieces off, we go, okay, well, let's see. It's my move then. And so eventually that kid played the game without any piece. He said, so-and-so to so-and-so. The master said, so-and-so, there's nothing on the board. <laughs> But that makes you have to be aware of every piece and where it is in relationship to every other piece. Is that right? Mm -hmm. But because our hearts have not been opened to the body of Christ yet, we are not aware of every piece in relationship to every other piece. Do you understand what I'm saying? We see bodies come and go and move and go over here and do that and whatever. But we don't see the living reality of that as God sees it. We have not so had the veil rent that we understand his resurrection body. And therefore that gives meaning to this gathering. But in one real sense, this is not the resurrection body. This is not it. You have to see it. And maybe you have to have it all knocked off the table so that you won't look there. But you will look. And, 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 and if you don't know where to look, then you say, Lord, my spirit bears witness to this. Lord, my heart cries out to know you, the living God. I cry out to understand your body so that there are and I, I can't explain it all right now, but there are things that begin to work in you in relationship <coughs> to the gathering that comes from there. Mm -hmm. And when things happen into the gathering, they don't change you. When negative things happen, it doesn't change you. When positive things happen, it doesn't change you. You're not up and down based on how good or how bad things are in the gathering. Things are up in Christ. Yeah. Right or wrong, folks. They're always up. 
You know, we're raised up, made sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But you know, you better watch out because we'll be dashed into the center of the earth or the molten lava, the heat of the, you know, no, we won't. We have been raised up in Him. And so what happens is that God in His Spirit, let's, let's imagine this. Let's imagine... You know how Jesus has captivated you as, as Savior. You know how Jesus has captivated you as Lord. You know how Jesus has captivated you in so many ways. But let's imagine that Jesus begins to captivate you, begins to relate, you begin to build a relationship, a union, a, a grafting in to Christ in His relationship in His heart. To his body. Well, what, what would that mean? What would that entail? Well, that would entail seeing as he sees. I mean, I, I don't just mean seeing spiritual truths, and I mean seeing one another, no longer after the flesh, but after his newborn. And so, and it would also mean not just seeing. But with that, the nature, the heart, the pathos, the, relate, the relating, the, the desire that he has for his body. Okay? Now we're, we're, now we're starting to move into comprehending what we termed leadership. But there's no leadership yet. There's no thought of leading a band of people or doing a great thing. There's no thought of that. There's only this coming away, as it were, into the heart of the Lord. There's only this, this coming together in oneness of accord. Oneness of accord with the Lord Jesus Christ. And pretty soon, and you begin to do this. You begin to say, Lord, not as I will, but as thy will. Lord, not as I see but as you see, Lord, and, and, and it is a coming away unto one, one. The body for you is beginning to be one. If you have done this to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. Anybody familiar with that scripture? Said, so, you fed me, you did this, you clothed me. And the man standing before the Lord said, Lord, I didn't do that to you. When did I do that? I don't remember doing that. He says, when you did it to the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. Okay, this, is, this isn't just, folks, this is not a ministry concept where you say, oh, okay, so I'm going to go do good deeds to people. That's not a ministry. That's not what he's saying. He's saying that you have ministered to me. That's my view. These are my bread. This, this is my body. Take, eat it. Let it become one with you, my body. Let you become one with it. Let your comprehension of, of things not be earthly, not be um, uh, individualistic and, and departmentalized, but filled with the knowledge of the Lord. All right, and if that begins to take place, then a care for the body begins to come in you, not upon you. It's, it's not an anointing. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't mean anything negative by that. I just mean that this is not, not going to be an anointing. I mean, I, maybe there are other things. The body may be anointed, but the care for the body is not an anointing. The care for the body is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The care for the body is a coming away from you, a coming away from the earth, a coming away from... And so things start happening in you. You don't even necessarily comprehend it. You're not pursuing leadership. You're not pursuing... You don't have 
a lot of hidden motives all in you and all in your heart that, that you deceive you and you let it deceive you and cover your face and so you go for whatever you want and pretty soon, I mean, I've seen this time and time again where somebody starts over here and God's got their path right here and they get over here and they go, okay, but I want this and so then, and then they get over, over here and pretty soon they're so far off from what God originally intended only because they didn't purify their hearts. They didn't let the Lord fill them and be the purity of their heart. They didn't, they didn't lose all that they might gain all. Amen? Amen. And, and so, and I understand that. I mean, I understand why I want this. And I mean, I, trust me, man, I've been through enough of this stuff myself. I mean, all, every human being has hidden little, dark little, creepy little places in them. That's all I know how to put it. It's stuff. Motives that say, well, no, no, no. And it's secretly just as if the devil, or if it's not the devil, then it is you saying, no, 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 let's move away from the Lord and all the goodness and all of the best that God has for me, let's move away from this. But you would never say that with your mouth or head, so you have to cover it over. That's right. Amen? You love Jesus too much to go on. Let's sneak away from Jesus. <laughs> you know? You wouldn't do that. It's not in you to say that. So what, what's the only answer? Self-deception. And we all, folks, there's not anybody in this room or watching this tape or anybody that doesn't have secret motives that work in them. The goal isn't to pull that thing out and beat the fool out of it. <laughs> you know? The goal is to replace it. That's the glorious happening that's going on. He must increase and I must decrease. Okay? Does it happen overnight? No. <laughs> There's two of us in perfect agreement. It doesn't happen overnight. But don't let that be an excuse. Please don't let that be an excuse. No, that pro that the, the work is done. Folks, there, there is a rest we can enter into. And you can enter into that even if everything isn't cleared out of you. You're not complete in you. You're complete in Him. If you believe that. But if you go wandering off over here and you don't truly embrace that forgiveness, you'll never find your way back. You're not smart enough. And boy, once the devil gets you over the hill, ooh boy, he'll run you rebel. You know? So, the only hope is, oh, Jesus, I want to know you. So this process of oneness begins to take place, and you begin to, you begin to, to see the body in a whole new way. You begin to see it as, as his body. As his body. You remember Mary and Bethany broke the alabaster box, and she ministered to his body. Jesus said, boy, you've got a big thing here. You know? Well, why? Well, we can't understand this, but Jesus came and ministered for three and a half years, and every second of that ministry, he came not to be ministered unto. His heart was to bless others. And time and time again, when it should have been his turn, <laughs> nobody thought of him. They all thought of themselves. Come on. And he was aware of that. He was very much aware of selfishness all around him. Did that deter him? Did Jesus ever stand up and say, you bunch of selfish, no good things, that's it, I quit. <laughs> no, that would be us. <laughs> yeah. But Jesus doesn't do that. That's the good news about this whole thing is that if we get Jesus, we got hope. And I don't just mean the Savior, but I mean the, the, the forming of this nature within us is more than just me being an individual superstar for God. Amen. That's right. The forming of this Christ in us makes you accountable, not just accountable, accountable, but, but what is, there's a better word, I'm sure, but being accountable for not just accountable to, but being accountable for others, looking out for them, praying for them, helping them. But not, when I say helping, I don't just mean, um, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm gonna, there's a million examples. One comes to my mind 
Uh, and so I'm just going to use it, and I don't want to embarrass anybody. But I appreciate Jimmy, and I appreciate how he shares the word with people. He's not, got, he doesn't have any motives. He's not towing the party line. You know? He's doing better than that. He's seeing the real thing. He's living in the real new creation, and he's trying to communicate that. Now, Jimmy's got plenty of problems himself, okay? So we don't, you know, we don't have to worry. He has not yet attained, but I do believe that he is pressing toward the mark of the price of the high cost. But, but it is as if, um, it is as if um, there has been a recognition that this is, you know, this is more than me going and hiding in a little place and spending all this time with me in the Word and me getting something. It is a recognition that me is we. Amen. And if you grow, I grow. Amen. That's right. And if you lose, I lose. Amen. Now, we're so individualistic in this country, folks. <laughs> you know, we are so in I mean, it's all about, you know, well, if I win, you lose. But the truth is, in this reality, and this is God's reality, not earth reality, if you lose, I lose. There's an old saying, cut off your nose to spite your face. Mm -hmm. You know? So, well, I'll just show you you stinking face and cut your nose off. You know, well, guess what? You just lost your nose. <laughs> you know? And it's not one of those, I'll get your nose. You know? You know? I mean, you know, if you, if you don't stand up for one another, then the Spirit of God, yes, the Lord wants to do that, but He wants to do it through His body. An example of that is Paul, when he was Saul of Tarsus, he was knocked down on the road to, the, to Damascus, and he met the Lord, and Jesus sent him into a town, into a body of believers, unto a man, and said, He'll pray for you, and you won't be blind anymore, because he was struck blind. Well, Jesus could have just said, Okay, well, I'm the, I'm the blind man here. You're healed. Now you get in there and you, you know. But there are realities that he's trying to teach him, and that is, you know, your blindness can be affected in a positive way through the body of Christ. That's my hand. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, that's his view now. I mean, that is his view. And so we begin to look at the resurrected Jesus not the Jesus, the pre-cross Jesus. The one, not just Jesus of Nazareth. Not just the view that most people have, and that is Jesus of Nazareth came and walked the earth, and then he got caught up, and that same one is said, no, 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 this Jesus died, and he came forth in a many-membered body, and this is the resurrected Jesus, and this is where he dwells. This is Zion. This is his body. This is his bride. This is the one that he's chosen. All right. The reason why we don't see that is because we see this. And so we see frailties and failures and stuff in people. And so we go, well, you know, you're not trying. You know, or you're not, you know, this or that or whatever. Okay, if this member right here isn't trying, is it no longer a member of the body of Christ? No, it's still, isn't it? And if it's weakening right here, the walk of the whole body, don't you think it would be a good idea to pray for that member? Yes. Don't you think it would be a good idea to love that member? Yes. All right. So, just heading toward this concept of, of leadership. Leadership is not as we suppose. It is not an ambitious game. It is not a climbing the ladder of success. In fact, the higher you up you get, the easier you're a pop shop for people. Where is it? You know. <laughs> you know, it's better to be low. And, and I'll tell you this, this is honest to goodness truth. 
If I could not be a leader, I would be a member. I would be the best sheep I ever could be. I would. I have asked the Lord, just take me away and put me in a body somewhere where I'm just a sheep, and I want to be the best sheep they ever had. You know, I mean, oh man, what a blessing to just support and to pray for and to financially give and to be there when things were needed and da da da, da just, just to show up, just to, you know, wow. And you may not believe that, and I don't know that I believed, would have believed stories like that when I was a young buck instead of an old gray doe or whatever I am now. I I can't be a dog. <laughs> Especially since I don't have any money. <laughs> well, I do have a dollar. So that makes me a buck. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> all right. So this, this thing begins to happen somewhere in the body. One or two, you know, let's just say one. Let's say one member. They're not looking down here and going, where is there an opening? Where is there an opening for leadership? In one sense, they are filled with the nature of Christ. And if they're looking down here at all, they're going, where is there a need? And I was told the last work day, Jason told me, said it was the most incredible work day we've ever had here. He said, people kept coming up and saying, is there something else? Or they would say, I see something, can I do this? And, you know, we're just jumping in and helping and thinking. And, you know, instead of zombies going, I will obey. Just tell me what to do. That's somebody under the law. I will obey, just tell me what to do. But, you know, I, I want a 15-minute break every hour, though. <laughs> yeah. And I want a lunch break every, you know. Eight hours. But instead, I mean, he, he, for example, I mean, with that statement, look at Jesus, and it says that there were people coming and going so much so that they had not had time to eat. Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus would have been brought up on charges. You're working these people too hard. You're, you know, you got them all working, they feed these people. And we got women and children. You got 5,000 people out here plus women and children. Something needs to be done about this. And I thought, you know, that is, that's the Lord, though. I mean, he's just ministering and he's thinking of others and he's not thinking of himself. He's not working on his plan. He's working on the Father's plan and he's working on the good of the whole. Now, you know, I think it's a good thing that we, that we just examine our own heart and say, why, would I, why do I do certain things? Why do I give myself certain times? Why do I, you know, what is my motivation? Begin to just, you know what, I mean, it's, it's a good, good thing to have an altar. And just start pulling stuff out and laying it on that altar and going, okay, you know what? This is not a good thing. But it's like we walk around, you know, I can't look down there. I'll see something bad. Well, no kidding. If it's not Jesus, you can forget. You know, I mean, if, until, if you haven't come that far yet, then you need to come that far. Then if it's you, it's probably not going to be real pretty. You know, but if it's Jesus, oh my goodness, it's beautiful. Beyond compare. Not worthy to be compared, the Bible says. Not even worthy to be compared. Not comparable and so much greater. Not even worthy to compare it to Jesus. And so you begin to say, okay, I want to be real. I want to know the truth. Why did I do what I just did? Why did I say what I just said? Mm -hmm. Pull that thing out and go, ooh. Mm -hmm. Well, a little piece of this, because it's usually this mix. It's, this, it's like this ball of thread with different colors in it. And, you know, here's yellow going all the way through it, you know, and here's red. And you say, oh, the, you know, here's, here's, here's blue representing deity. And you go, well, at least Jesus is in there. <laughs> and usually he is because you love God. You know what I mean? I mean, there's no question about it. Nobody's questioning your love for God. You love God. And, and, but here's what we usually do. 
we look in there and we rip that one blue thread out and say, that's the total reason for it. And that's not. There's other motives. And what we need to do is pull the whole ball, throw it down there and say, well, thank God there is a little bit of Jesus working in me. But what's this yellow one? Well, you know, this is, you know, this. And what's this one here? Oh, boy, I can't believe that. I've done that and just been embarrassed. <laughs> and it's going, oh my God, you know, I said that for that reason, and just went, Lord, you're just going to have to help me. I, we cannot, we cannot have this. <laughs> this cannot be in your house, yeah. you know. And so, I mean, that stuff will just stay in there unless you want it out. You know what I mean? I mean, you, there has to be something in you that says, you know, I want this junk job. I don't, I mean, because you keep it all in there, and then the day finally comes and God says, okay, I'm going to give you a position or whatever, whatever, you know, terms were bad, but, you know, I'm just trying to help you understand, put you in leadership or something, and you're going to be in, infecting the people that you're leading in the situation. You're going to be infecting, not affecting for the kingdom of God, infecting with, with your stuff. So you go, man, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be a leper that's bringing junk in here. You know? I want to be a son of God. I want Christ formed in me. And when I, when I touch something, I want people to say, that's the Lord. And that was the Lord. You know, because one thing that begins to happen is you don't just see you and another member. And just da da da, -da. You see you and another member. And if you minister to them, you think of how that relates to the whole. You do, you do. You think, of, you go, okay, well, because you're part of the body of Christ. It says it. We read it right here. For as the body is one. And so you're going, okay, now, how does this, what, you know, in other words, now this is the life and nature of Jesus beginning to be worked in you in this manner. You, you are not thinking just of yourself. You are not just thinking of ministering to another. You are thinking of the whole relationship and how this, and you know, you can't think of every particle. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about there's a wider picture that God gives you from the heart of Christ being formed in you. It's not. It's not. Earth thoughts in relationship to what I just did because it is heavenly thoughts in relationship to how this brings forth Christ for the whole. How it blesses the Lord and the Lord in His body. Now that's a tough one to break in this country. Because we always think how I bless the Lord sitting far away at the edge of the universe on a throne and you know, he's and he pretty much got long hair and a beard and white robe and sandals. And that's the Jesus that we're trying to bless. And, and every time we do something, we look up and this little smile comes on his face. We go, yeah. And that's kind of how we, re that's the relationship that we have. Instead of a relationship of being one and him flowing through us and, and me relating to everything around me according to his view and according to his idea. And if, and if he takes it and he goes just like that, if he stirred it up or he took it all away, he hasn't taken away the spirit of that in your heart. You are one spirit with that. And if there's one person left, then you minister by Christ there, by life there. And if there's, and if there's nobody and you're sent somebody, somewhere else, you minister by life. You are pouring in the oil and the wine. You're pouring it in. You are his hands. And his hands reach into the clay. And they begin to be molded into the image that he wants. But you're his hands. You're the body of Christ. Amen? And you say, well, only the Lord knows how to form these people. But he's, he's, he's saying things and doing things through you. <laughs> and you're going, and somebody says, wow, that's really cool. And you say, it was the Lord. And they say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was really cool what you did. And you said, no, it was the Lord. <laughs> it wasn't me. It was, I may be his hands, but it is his, his view, his eyes, his way, his understanding, his touch even through my, me as a hand. Because me as a hand without him, hey, give up. That's my touch. You know, 
I mean, you know, text it, hey, what's going on? You know, you know, rattling around, making noise or whatever, I don't know. A little louder, his touch is such that literally you are sensing his nature in that touch. Not just somebody doing something for you. Something beyond you. That's the purpose. The body of Christ in itself without Jesus is called a corpse. You said, yeah, but I'm the body of Christ. You're a corpse. If Christ is not functioning in you, you're a corpse. But I'm, I'm the body of Christ. You're dead. Yeah, but I, you know. The thing that makes the body alive is Christ. The thing that makes the body valuable is Christ. The thing that edifies one another is Christ in his body. Building up on you. There's multitudes of scriptures on this, aren't there? And so, and we'll get into this term later on, probably not today, but this term of taking responsibility, oh no, not like we think, not like, not like the earth again. But taking responsibility for the heart of the Lord, taking responsibility for for, uh, but see, again, I mean, we'll, we'll close, take a break here and just say, you cannot take responsibility if you have not seen. And seeing, as we'll see in the next class, has no thought of leadership. It has only thought of the head himself. But when the head starts flowing through you, the head is the leader. And he starts, it's not just Jesus flowing through you now. It's the head. You see the body, because he's the head of the body. Amen? I mean, that's what the scriptures say. He's the head of the body. It doesn't say he's the head of General Motors. I don't, I, I'm, I'm almost positive that it doesn't say he's the head of the universe. Not the word head. Because the head is on the body. He's the head of the body. And as such, when, when you begin to hold the head and relate in relationship to him in that way, then leadership, if you will, and of course it's not leadership at all, is it? But it is, but it's not. It is the head and his view and his heart and his way and his touch and his care literally flowing down through you and then you begin to do things that you probably wouldn't have done otherwise. Why? Because you care more? No, because his care is working in you. Because you, you've been prepared and trained as a great leader? No, you're probably not trained on many fronts. The training is in the life of Christ. The training is to have the right life in nature as you meet everything. And then you'll, you'll God will somehow bring you through everything. It's not about showing you every circumstance that you'll ever face in life and, and preparing you for that. It can't be done. You know, it's just like marriage. I mean, God made marriage. Where you, you, two young people get married and a lot of times right off the bat they have kids and they go, how do you raise this kid? I'm 20, you know. 20, I'm, Carol, you're in your 20s, right? 27, I'm 27 years old. How do you do this? You know? I mean, it's the weirdest thing. There's no training. You just, zoop, there's your baby. Take care of it. For life, you know, for 18 years. What? We were just having fun. Yeah, well, responsibility just changed everything. Responsibility just came upon you. But you know what? Because it wasn't, it's not just quote unquote fun. It's relationship and it is a, 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 a knowing of one another and of, of the one heart and of coming together as such 
that literally <coughs> you become one. God wants that spiritually more than he cares about, and I'm sorry, we all love George, more than he wants George. He wants Jesus. Amen. And he wants Jesus coming out of his bride by union and by life. Is that too rough? It's the truth. All right, let's take a little break.